the first uh, Moses needed a successor, and Joshua was his his uh, servant, his assistant. It says in the Bible, his assistant. And yet Moses went to God and said, "Okay, who's going to take over?" And he said, "Joshua was going to be the one. That's who you were going to say, and we're going to confirm it through the uh, the Urim and the Purim that he's the one." And how many times have we seen in the, in our world that a personal assistant to a CEO, and the CEO leaves, the personal assistant becomes the next CEO. That doesn't happen. I mean, it just doesn't happen. But Josh was right there at his right hand the whole time. And unbeknownst to him, he's being groomed for the next leader. Because God had plans in store for him. So... Moses dies, Joshua steps up, and says, okay, we're getting ready to cross into the promised land. And when the priests step their feet in the water, it's going to stop and we're going to walk across dry land. And that's what he said was going to happen, and it happened. At flood stage. At flood stage, that's right. In the spring when it's pouring rain. Hmm. All the peoples of that area saw that water back up and stop up. And it put the fear of God in them. They were shaking in their shoes immediately. We know that uh, when Joshua sent the spies to Jericho, they knew all about the Israelites, all that had happened. And they were locked up, sealed up inside their walls, thinking, okay, we're, we're cool. You know, we're in here, you all ain't coming to get us. <laughs> and God tells Joshua, uh, walk around the walls, seven days on the seventh day walk around seven times and the walls fell Joshua says what's going to happen this is what we're going to do and it happened now when a man starts telling you something to get ready to happen it happens what do we call him prophet. he's a prophet they, they go on to the next attack at Ai and they lose the battle and Joshua falls out you know crying Lord what happened the Lord says do this this and this and then, Singling out, with casting lots or whatever they decide, they find out this is the man who committed the sin. Joshua's doing what God told him. Said we need to do this. We need to find out who it is, and it happened. Joshua prophesied that if anybody tries to build the city, rebuild the city of Jericho, he loses his firstborn, his lastborn son. And then when Meyer pointed out in First Kings seventeen, uh, the man tried to do that and lost his first son and his last son. And it came to pass, just like he said. Hmm. Prophet's the kind of person who does those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So then he set out um, after they fight these two battles, all the local kings there in the south say, okay, we've got to take care of business here. We've got to stop this, these Israelites coming in here and taking our land. And they go out to face him on the battlefield and Joshua whoops them. He goes out and conquers all the towns and they kill all the people. Remove all the inhabitants. Cleanse the land. And then right in the middle of this campaign, he stops in the presence of his enemies, runs up to Shechem and gets between the two mountains, gives them an e-ball and does what, the, what Moses said they were supposed to do. So everything kind of comes to an end right there in chapter 10. And now, beginning in chapter 11, is the northern conquest. Now, he's already whooped the southern kings, right? He's taken all their land, all the way to Gaza. Gaza, in the map. No. That needs to be scrolled up some. Could you move it? Rita, could you go back and make that go up a little bit? This is the, we're going to get into this in the next few chapters about the, how the, Land was sorted out. Who's going to get what? Israel and Megiddo, that's where the Battle of Armageddon is going to take place. In that area right there, just low land. And take it on up. Okay. Take the map. There you go. There you go. So it, <laughs> right in here is Gilgal. There's Jerusalem. He's swept in and he's taken this whole area all the way to, to Gaza. See what there's Philist Philistines, Gaza and Ashkelon, Ashdod. 
Those areas, that's where the Philistines are still today. They're called Palestinians. We call them Philistinians. They're still there. It's the same people. That's why they call this Palestine. It was a, the Romans called it that in, in the reference to Philistines. It was their way of saying Philistines, Palestine. And so that's still Gaza. That's still full of the enemy today. And over here on the east is the enemy, and up, you know, in the north. But he's already taken all this area. Now he's getting ready to go up into this area up in here. Okay. Well, king, a group of kings came out. Jabin from Hazor, Jobab from Madan, Shimron from Ashaf, all the kings of the north, south, south of the Sea of Galilee, those kings, Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Pezerites, Jebusites, and Hivites. You see... What we have here is a severe case of Canaanitis. <laughs> All these people are inflamed over the Israelites being there. You know, arthritis is inflammation of the joints. Well, this is the inflammation of Canaan <laughs> called Canaanitis. Okay. They're all riled up. In Joshua 11, 4, we read, so they went out, they and all their armies with them. This is talking about these kings and these peoples. And it says, as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude. Now that's a crowd. With very many horses and chariots. Chariots. The Israelites didn't have chariots. You know, that's cavalry, that's tanks. And when all these kings had met together... They came and camped together at the waters of Naram to fight against Israel. They all gathered together and said, okay, we can deal with this Joshua virus. It's coming to the land. Giving us Canaanitis, okay? The problem was, God said these people had to be removed. And we read in Leviticus chapter 18, it lists all the things the sexual sins that they're not supposed to be doing. God instructed the Israelites, don't do these list of sins. I'm not going to go through all that. You all know what they are. It's just everything imaginable that you don't want to do. Anything outside of marriage, right? But God said in verse 24 of chapter 18, do not defile yourselves with any of these things. For by all these, the nations are defiled, which I am casting out before you, for the land is defiled. Therefore, I visit the punishment of its iniquity upon it, and the land vomits out its inhabitants. So this is why these people got to go. They committed all manner of sin. They're worshiping all manner of idols. Verse 26, you shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations either any of your nation or any stranger who dwells among you. For all these abominations the men of the land have done who were before you, and thus the land is defiled. Lest the land vomit you out also when you defile it as it vomited out the nations that were before you. Now see, that's where we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. This nation is committing some of these abominations. Yes. Are we going to get vomited out? I don't know. Well, you know, all the weather stuff, hurricanes, fires, earthquakes, yeah. hurricanes, you name it. Well, that doesn't vomit you out, but you can sure hurt you. Verse 29, for whoever commits any of these abominations, the persons who commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore, you shall keep my ordinance so that you do not commit any of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that you do not defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord your God. So that's why we we got to be careful too. Yeah. This, this nation was consecrated to God, yeah. just like Israel. Okay. And we're doing some of the stuff that's in 18 says don't do it. Uh, what I was talking about earlier. Guess what? In one day Joshua defeated 31 kings in one day 
on the battlefield. Where is this? Uh, in chapter 11. <clears throat> that certainly seems impossible. Not yeah. with the Lord. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Verse 8. That's Verse right. 6. But the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow, about this time, I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. All. How many is all? All. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua and all the people of war with him came against them suddenly by the waters of Merom. They're all camped. And he lit into them. And they attacked them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who defeated them and chased them to Grave Shaddam, to the brook Marisoth. Marisoth. Miseroth. Into the valley of Mitzvah eastward. They attacked them until they left none of them remaining. How many is none of them? So Joshua did to them as the Lord had told him. He hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots with fire. Up here it said, They were like the sands on the sea, as many as people as the sand that is on the seashore in the multitude. He wiped the slate clean. That's why. Because with God, you're a multitude. That's right. So what yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Huh? Oh, yeah. You're a bigger multitude than no matter how much. What? what? That's You want? Oh, you want to list them? Just tell me where. Hold on. Two. Is it just districts? No, no, no. Uh, Different districts. Two. Yeah. No, one. Two. Yeah. Because eleven, one through five. No, 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 no. It, oh, well, it's a okay. Summary of Josh Conquest. <laughs> it's okay. We need to be. Now it took more time. It took more time to take the take the land. He killed the army that day, but he still had to go out and take the cities, just like he did before. Okay. But it lists all kings, and then in uh, it says thirty one kings and all. It starts in uh, chapter 12, actually. Is that what you were saying? Kings conquered by Joshua down to 7, 12, 7. Kings. Oh, I see. Yeah, it lists them all there. All these kings starting in 12, chapter 12, starting in verse 7, and it just lists them all. Honey, you wanna, we really want to hold questions you wanna, until the end. You know, really? Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah, verse 8. 12, verse 8. Start filling in there, Nancy. It's all over the end. One king, this king, that king, that king. 31 kings in all. There you go. Okay. It ends in verse 24. The king of Tisra won all the kings, 31. Okay. He woke them. Because with God, you're a majority. You are a multitude. One can slay a thousand, two can put ten thousand around, right? Something like that. Yes. Now, in chapter 13, it says, Now Joshua was old, advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, You are old, advanced in years, and there, and there remains very much land yet to be possessed. So, if, we, if you all want to take the time, Nancy, to read chapters 13 through 17, they go step by step and divide the land. And how did they do it? By a lot. Casting lots, right? You know what we learned about casting lots? 
it's the way it's sorting things out. You know, when the NFL football game starts, team captains go out in the middle of the field, ref stands there with a coin in his hand and says, uh, visiting team, you know, or visiting team, yeah, call heads or tails. And they flip the coin, it comes down and says heads, they, they call heads and heads comes, they win. They just cast a lot in terms of who to kick the ball, right? The two captains didn't get out there and get in a wrestle match or in a fist fight to figure out who's gonna kick the ball off. They did it by tossing a coin. Okay? That's casting a lot. That's why when they broke this land down, they call it lots. If you have a piece of land you want to sell to build a house on, it's called a lot. Yeah. What is that like? Drawing straws? Yeah. Flipping a coin, drawing straws. Yeah. It's a way of sorting it out, but God's hand was always upon it. So he, he sorted it out. Who's going to get what? God was guiding it. Okay? You know, you walk into the store down here and you buy a ticket and you put numbers on it. And if you win, you win a bunch of money. It's called a lot to read. That's why it's called a lottery. Casting lots. It's right out of the Bible. Not the gambling part of it. But as far as you know what they call it today, but that's where it comes from. We're talking about lots. So, so in verse in chapter 13, 13 through 19, that's a, a nice little thing about Caleb and his story. How Caleb got his promised land inside the promised land. He was promised a peace. And he said, I'm ready to take it. And that's a real cool story. He goes up, he whoops the giants, takes Hebron, and get what he's, he got what he's supposed to. Because he went to Joshua, hey, Moses said I could have this. Joshua says, have at it. Caleb says, I'm as fit at 80 as I was at 40. Go up there and whoop them. Went up on the mountain and whooped them. Giants, Anakin's descendants. Then in chapter, in verse 18, it says, seven tribes were instructed to, to go take their land. They were instructed to go survey the land and Joshua cast lots to divide the land. And so they sorted it out. And what you see behind me is how it got sorted out. Now it says he sent seven tribes north. I thought there's 12. I don't know where it Because some of it had already been sorted out. Three of the tribes, two and a half tribes, were over here on the east side of Jordan. They said, we want this land. Half of Manasseh and the other two tribes, Gad and whoever's further south. Bring it down there. Rena. Take the map down, Rena. Proven. And the Moabites aren't good people. So Reuben and Gad and the half of the tribe of Manasseh are on that side. So that's two, but two and a half. From twelve, say three from twelve is nine. Oh, wait a minute. Remember, the Levites don't get any land. Okay. So that brings it down to eight, and one of this is half of Manasseh, which was just getting spread across both sides of the Jordan there. So the other seven had to go sort it out. <clears throat> now it says in verse 49, chapter 19, when they had made an end of dividing the land as an inheritance according to their borders, the children of Israel gave an inheritance among them to Joshua, the son of Nun. According to the word of God, they gave him the city which he asked for, Timnath Sarah, in the mountains of Ephraim. And he built the city and dwelt in it. These were the inheritances which Eleazar the priest, Joshua, the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel divided as an inheritance by lot in Shiloh before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So they made an end of dividing the country. They did this in front of the tabernacle. God's presence was there when it was taking place. Now, in chapter 20, we see some interesting addendums 
that God did as he was dividing the land. This chapter is in speaking of the cities of refuge. It said, the Lord spoke, the Lord also spoke to Joshua saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, appoint for yourself cities of refuge of which I spoke to you through Moses that the slayer who, acts, who kills a person accidentally or unintentionally may flee there and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he flees to one of those cities and stands at the entrance of the gate of the city and declares his case in the hearing of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city as one of them and give him a place that he may dwell among them. Then if the avenger of blood pursues him, they shall not deliver the slayer to his hand because he struck his neighbor unintentionally, but did not hate him beforehand. Hate? If you hate somebody, kill him, it's murder. This is accidental. Okay. So that's talking about how murder is an act of hate. Okay. And that's why thou shalt not murder as opposed to thou shalt not kill. And so they try to sort it out and give this person a place to run to until they can sort it out. <clears throat> so they, they decree all these certain, a group, certain group of cities is now refuge cities where you can run to if this situation happens to you. And then in chapter 21, the Levites get to receive their towns that they're going to live in because they don't get land out in the country. They live in, in certain towns. And so the, all these assignments are made about which Levi, you know, where they're going to live in which towns, and they get the, they get some land adjacent to the town. And so each one of those is established. Uh, it says, in, as an example, in verse uh, two, and they spoke to them at Shiloh in the land of Canaan, saying, the Lord commanded through Moses to give us cities to dwell in with their common lands for our livestock. So the children of Israel gave the Levites from their inheritance at the commandment of the Lord, these cities in their common lands. And then they, they list them all, all these towns. So the Levites get taken care of. So they, they get a certain amount of land, probably to have a garden or maybe to raise a few, a few animals. You know, goes through all this listing of uh, each each one, each one, all the way down through that chapter. So if you want to read all about that, Nancy, that's where you find out about that. <laughs> yes. Levites getting their land. Okay. So we've got cities refuge lined out, land out, <laughs> and now we got the Levites taken care of. So everybody's getting their part, their piece and parcel. And it says in verse 43, so the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give to the fathers. And they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers and not a man of all their enemies stood against them. No, no enemies left. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. How much is all? All. <laughs> Every jot and tittle Most of what God says is going to happen, happened. And guess what? If they had said yes to God the first time around, it would all happen then. Because it happened like he said, all came to pass. They got all the land. There are no enemies now left. They've got a group of tricksters living amongst them that, that fooled them into making peace with them. But now they got a group of people that gets to haul the firewood and water for them, these servants. Now an interesting situation happens. And this is in chapter 22, Nancy. It's when these tribes here go over here to Jordan. They fought the land. See, they made an agreement. They could have, they, they, they said, we want this land 
on this side of the river. We don't have to fight for this land. This wasn't being held by anyone. We've got to go in and conquer. So Joshua said, okay, y'all can have that land on one condition, that you will still fight and help us conquer the rest of it. And they agreed, yes, we'll fight. And they did. They did as they agreed. Now it comes to the point where now they want to go back and go, go live in their land. We don't, we're done fighting. It's all over. We want to go settle our land. So in verse or chapter 22, verse 1, it said, Then Joshua called the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Right here. And said to them, You have kept all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. They did it. They did exactly what he asked. <clears throat> you have not left your brethren these many days up to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God has given you rest to your brethren as he promised them. Now, therefore, return and go to your tents into the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But take careful heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away. And they went to their tents. Now half the tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given a possession in Bashan. But to the other half of it, Joshua gave a possession among their brethren on this side of the Jordan, westward. And indeed, when Joshua sent them away to their tents, he blessed them and spoke to them, saying, Return with much riches to your tents, and with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, and with very much clothing. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. See, once they got past Jericho and having to give God first fruits, they got to get it, keep it all, share it, spread it around. Everybody got one piece of it. Nobody took one big chunk up and hoarded it from the rest. They shared it. They split it up. They spread it around. Very much clothing. The women have been going all these 40 years without clothes. They got brand new clothes, shoes. They didn't have to pay for them. They just picked them out. Oh, that's my size and color. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's go shopping! Yeah, Lisa, don't appeal to our emotions. That's huh? not nice. <laughs> don't get us all hyped up. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Some of this stuff's probably new in the stores. <coughs> Wasn't just hand me downs. Right. Some of the stuff that some women had in their closet and never wore the first time, they just wanted it. You know, women do that. They so stuff. You the so just got it for yes. Macy's. <laughs> yeah, they right they, they got it on the sale. Yeah. Half off. Yeah. Yes, we do. So the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel at Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go to the country of Gilead, to the land of their possession, which they obtained according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. But they stopped once they got across the river. And when you read the story out, huh, they built this beautiful, huge altar. And... When the tribes on this side of the river saw them do it, they thought, oh my word, they're, 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 they're building an altar as an idol. And they plotted and started making plans to go to war. Go, go fight them immediately. Amen. Said, uh, and when they came to the region of the Jordan, which is in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, Children of Gad and Hatra Manasseh built an altar there by the Jordan, a great, impressive altar. Now the children of Israel heard someone say, Behold, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh have built an altar on the frontier of the land of Canaan in the region of Jordan, on the children of Israel's side. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered together to shadow to go to war against them immediately. Because they'd already learned their lessons in the desert. They'd already learned a lesson at Ai. 
better follow God's plan. They saw what all God did to remove all the inhabitants off the land, how God's hand had to be upon them for them to whip all these people that were a multitude, the sands of, sands of the sea, right? Now it's the last, at least the worst thing we can do now would be turn back to some other false god. And so they were going to take a stand. They were going to put a stop to this. But then they did the right thing. They just didn't strike out and go to war with them. They went, said in, in verse 15, Then they came to the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh, to the land of Gilead, and spoke with them, saying, Thus says the whole congregation of the Lord, What treachery is this that you have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord, and that you have built for yourselves an altar that you might rebel this day against the Lord? Is this the iniquity of Peor not enough for us? See, they already learned some lessons. They learned some lessons. And they were willing to take a stand and fight for it now. They really, they had it in their heart. We've got to follow God. from which we are not cleansed till this day, although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord, but that you must turn away this day from following the Lord. And it shall be, if you rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he will be angry with the whole congregation of Israel. Nevertheless, if the land of your possession is unclean, then cross over to the land of the possession of the Lord, of the Lord where the Lord's tabernacle stands, and to take possession among us. But do not rebel against the Lord nor rebel against us by building yourselves an altar besides the altar of the Lord of our God. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass and a cursed thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel? And the man did, did not perish alone in his iniquity. That means if you're messing up, we're all in trouble. A little leaven. This is a big leaven, it looks, looks like. Mm -hmm. Then the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh answered and said to the heads of the division of Israel, The Lord God of gods, the Lord God of gods, he knows and let Israel itself know. If it is in rebellion or if in treachery against the Lord, do not save us this day. If we have built ourselves an altar to turn from fallen Lord, or if to offer on it burnt offerings or grain offerings, or if to offer peace offerings on it, let the Lord himself require an account. But in fact, we have done it for fear, for a reason, saying, in time to come, your descendants, and talking to the tribes on this side, your descendants, they speak to our descendants saying, what have you to 